I'm just making sure my life is going to work. I'm just making sure my life is going to work. You can't even see the light so that you have to use the, the mouse. I prefer to use the mouse. I'm waving my arm. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right, it's 7.59. So in order for us to stay on time, take a break, there's a nice conversation in the morning energy, but we want to get started so that we stay on time, because I was told specifically, don't you dare not stay on time. So we'll try that. Um, so we'll go right into uh, our speaker very soon. I'm Tang Lim. I'm going to be your dear moderator today. I've given the, the board two minutes, five minutes, so I'll try to use them. But I think most of our speakers today are more than experienced. So I trust that they'll stay on time. Hopefully they'll give you guys some time for questions too. 25 minutes. <laughs> so our first speaker is going to be Jeff Porter from USDA and RCS, so I'll let him introduce himself. All right. Great. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? You excited about being here? All right. I'm glad that you're here today, and you know we're going to learn a lot of things. You know, I love coming to these conferences. I love being here. I love, love coming and, and interacting with, with folks. It's just great to come and, and see what's going on. Uh, across the country with these, these different technologies and different ideas, different concepts. And it, it's, this is just uh, part of the session. Hopefully you're having some good interaction with folks throughout the week as well. Uh, my name is Jeff Porter and I work with the Natural Resources Conservation Service. I'm the team leader for the animal manure and nutrient management team. And uh, we actually have a team now. Woohoo! I'm excited about that. So if, if you have some questions or things about some different technologies, we, we definitely would. Where we're here to help and provide that assistance, and we do mean that. Uh, you know, we're not with the government; we're here to help, but we, we mean it when we say that to you. Uh, just just a quick couple quick announcements for NRCS folks. Uh, what we'd like to do is, if we could at lunchtime, if we could kind of find a couple tables together, we'll just have a little bit of communication time to discuss there. And then also uh, tonight at dinner, uh, if we could meet at 5:30 downstairs for those of you with NRCS that are here. If you can, can join us today at 5.30, we're going to go out for somewhere for dinner. I think it should be a good social time for us to get a chance to interact with one another. Um, how many of you were here in 2013, well, not here, but in the first Waste to Worth conference in 2013 in Colorado? Anybody here? All right. Uh, if, if, if anybody was here and you, you, you heard me get up to, to speak, uh, this was a topic I actually spoke about. I said, it's, so we got this, this fantastic document that's coming out. Guess what? Six years later, we're still waiting. And that, that's why I had to make a little change to the, 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 the presentation. It says it's finally here, almost. Uh, we have been working on this document since 2008. So we've got 11 years, so we've got some really some good information, some, some good data, I guess, some, some good, good stuff in this document that we want to share with you. Uh, it is. Uh, in, in my mind, I, I want to consider this probably one of the most comprehensive solid liquid separation documents that actually exists. There, this, this, is, this covers a whole gamut of things, and that's what I want to talk with you today. As, and again, to tell you how close we are, I'm just checking the website every day. That's how close we are to this thing being posted. And I want to show you how to get to the site, how to get this document when it is posted. But, but uh, this, to share with you just a little bit how to get this thing to there we go. Uh, does anybody, can you tell me, uh, anybody good at Latin? Anybody, anybody got anything in Latin? You, you good, at, good at Latin? Good. Taswi tepsan scenario? Well, if you just mix it, work it up, it's waste separation. So uh, this is, you know, one of the things to think about is when we work with landowners, when we talk about different issues and things, a lot of them have ideas that they want to do something. That they, they, they have this concept, and, and that's what we, all of us are here to help with that. You know, whether NRCS extension, you know, uh, uh, private consultants, 
that's what we're here to do is to provide that assistance. And that's what this document here is to, is to do, is to help you as, as the provider work with landowners in, in helping them make the decisions of what, what they uh, would like to, to use on their farms. And then again, I think that's, that's why this is, this is such an important uh, document that's going to be coming out. Now, what, why did we put this together? Well, within uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service, we, have, uh, we do our work based on conservation practice standards. And we have around 170 practice standards, and more than 20 of those standards are associated with waste management. And we have all kinds of different waste management standards. We, we have, of course, the, uh, the our waste storage facility, we have waste treatment, and then we also have this waste separation standard. And that's why we, we put together this document, was to really help us to focus in on that waste separation facility standard, because there, there's so many different technologies out there. And the technologies are constantly changing, constantly updating. And, and this document allows for that, uh, for, for your opportunities to, to look at new innovations. It doesn't just look at what's existing, but it gives you the theory. It gives you some, some of the concepts of how, how you can look at things down the road when, when new ideas do come, come across the way. So we needed this document to help us. From, from an agency standpoint, but, but I saw it as much more than just from the agency. This is something that, that anybody could use. You know, not just uh, you, the participants here, but also landowners. I think they could use this to get the ideas and the concepts of, of how to go about doing some of these different ideas to help with them their planning. We wanted to develop this document to cover both the current and innovative, innovative technologies. And again, this is this, one of the nice things in this document. It goes through the theory. Now, it doesn't go into theory where we don't understand it. And that, that's, that's one of the nice things I like about it because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty basic in, in terminology and things. And I want to make sure that people understand how to do this. And this, this document does that, I think, in a very good way to, so that you can also look at the new technologies. It is, it, it is adaptable to those new technologies. We also want to do something to, to look at, at the, again, the theory to understand uh, our, our staff can understand why we're doing this, why you want to put in this practice. Instead of having just a black box, we want the, we want people to understand why you want to put a screw press in, or why you want to put in a, a filter press, or why you want to put in a an incline screen, or, or you want to use a gravity system. And and this will, will help staff to understand that. Also, we want to give some of this to help help landowners to make the the right decision. What's going to be best for them? Again, they're inundated all the time with, with, hey, come to me, use this one. No, use this technology. Well, here, hopefully through this, we can help them to make that right decision. And then another really neat thing that I like about this, the illustrations, there are a lot of pictures. I like pictures because they, they, they you know, pictures is definitely worth a thousand words. And here, I, I truly believe that you can actually see that. And not only do we have the pictures, but we have a lot of examples. And I like the examples that were put in this, this document because they do help you to understand and how to actually do the calculations, how you can compute, you know, what's the separation efficiency, uh, what, what's the separation concentration reduction, those types of things. Also, we, we, uh, there's a section in there talking about uh, use of, of flocculants, coagulants. So using those polymers, those metal salts in there to enhance the separation technology, it, it talks about, you know, why do a, a jar test? And it goes through some of those concepts of that. Uh, again, the examples. I really like the examples that are in there. Uh, we, we have a big section on sand laden manure. So the, the, I know that's with your, a lot of your dairies. This is a, a huge issue, a huge thing to, to work with. So we, we've got a, a great section on that. And then also uh, we're looking at how, how the, the, the system actually perform. There, there's some, some good information in there covering that as well. So what's in the document? Let me just, just give you a quick overview of some of the items and things that are in there. Well, it starts out by looking at, at some of the different methods of solid liquid separation. So we're, we're looking at those, those concepts. The first off, it will look at those based on density. So those, those types of technologies that look at density, that's it. we have a section on that. And then it's looking at particle size. So how do we separate things based on particle size? And so we've got the, the technology separated based on that. Then we're looking at manure characteristics. You know, how are the, the age of the animals? What impact does that have on your manure characteristics? Uh, how are they housed? 
All these types of things are taken into account, and, and we, we go through that, or at least, uh, we'll say, John Chastain went through that. In, in great detail, and we do appreciate all the work on that, and then, then the, the benefits that, that we have from the different separation technologies. Uh, we Then we also talk about some of the fundamentals. Again, this is where the theory comes into play. It talks about, you know, why is screening important? How does screening work? How does filtration work? Settling? Uh, the, the issue of hindered settling. Well, what impact does that have? And it goes through, again, the theory of some of that. We, we go through the system performance. And that's one of the things whenever you're looking at a document, when you're, you're comparing something on a different separation technology, are you looking at concentration reduction or are you looking at mass removal? They're two totally different things. And you need to understand, are you comparing apples to apples or are they apples to oranges? So you need to understand that and this goes through an explanation of what this is and how those come about so you can do those, those comparisons when you're looking at different technologies. Also, we're looking at some of those technologies that will uh, have high uh, separation efficiencies, such as using your, your coagulants, your flocculants, uh, also your final treatment types of things. And then we're looking at some of the other separation technologies, and, and you can see the, the list of, of things in here. We go through some of the design concepts and design numbers for, for those as well. We, we have some design considerations, and, and one of the things that, that, as I have been doing this for a, a long time, we've got to understand is many times one system or one technology may not be enough. So it goes through, how do you do multiple calculations? How do you go through multiple technologies to, to have a system to work? So I like looking at things as systems. I don't like to look at them as individual components. Because if you're just looking at a single component, you're not going to get the whole picture. So I like to evaluate it from a system standpoint. And then another thing I really like was in the appendix. We have some demonstration projects. I worked a number of years with an organization called the Farm Pilot Project Coordination Group out of Tampa, Florida. And they did over 40 on-farm demonstration projects. And these were farm-scale projects. These were not bench-scale. These were not in a laboratory. These were on-farm. And they had some great information, some great data was collected there. And again, John took a lot of those, those studies and he kind of summarized them in, in one of the appendices. So I think this was, was really a, a great piece of information that you can look at and get some good information. You can still go on their website. When you read about one of these in this document, you say, oh, I, I like that. I like what they've done there. You can still go on their website, pull up the final report, and get that information. It goes into more detail about how you evaluate your polymers. You know, how do you come up with the right dosage if you're going to do some of these high rate separation processes? And then you know, there's also some additional performance data for, for different types of technology. So if, if you didn't get enough in the document, there's more at the end. So, so this is one of those where you, the climax may actually be in the appendix. I don't know. So here was the process we went through. We worked with, through the, the Piedmont South Atlantic Cooperative Ecosystem Studies Unit, the, the CESU group. And I really like going through the CESUs when we can. And one of the nice things, you know, from the federal government standpoint, we don't have to do a competitive process because it's already done through the CESU. And then we, we worked with Clemson, Clemson University. And again, with John Chastain, Dr. Chastain, I do appreciate all the work that you did on this. John spent many, 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 many hours, many years working on, on this. And then once the document was done, uh, from, from his standpoint, we, as, as our national environmental engineers, we went in and reviewed the document and made a, a few minor adjustments here and there, moved a few pictures around. But we think we have a really, really good document. So what we learned, the performance of, of these different technologies, they vary widely. And it's not just because of the technology. You have to really take into account the livestock operations. You have to take into account so many different things. You know, when you're looking at, at some of these, these different uh, systems, you know, it'll say, well, the separation efficiency is 30 to 50 percent. Well, you go, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, it does. When you Actually, when you read the document, you begin to understand why you have such a wide, wide range. 
because of, of all the variabilities that come into play because of the animal types, animal age, how they're housed, all these different types of things. So, so we learned that and that, it, that the performance is affected by so many different factors. Also, the, the, depend, the, the, the te technology that is chosen is really going to be dependent on a lot of different things. It's going to be dependent on you know, what does a landowner want? What are the objectives? It's not just, oh, well, we, this will get you 50% of efficiency, separation efficiency. So what? What does the landowner want? What do they need? You know, maybe they only need 25%. Maybe they don't have to get 75%. It really comes down to what, what do they need? What are the performance goals? Uh, how, how much operation maintenance is required? That's huge on these things. Because, you know, a, a dairy operator, what do they want to do? They want to produce milk, don't they? They don't want to be out there spending all the time operating and maintaining these pieces of equipment. So you've got to take those types of things into account. Also, uh, I, I put this third here because I think this is, this is something to, to really consider. Prices is important, but it's not the ultimate thing. And sometimes that's what we have to work with landowners on for them to understand that it may cost a little bit more, but what benefits are you getting as a result of it? So the, those types of discussions have to take place with the landowner. And yes, it is important, but it, to me it's not the most important thing. Also, it can help them to make those informed decisions on their different separation technologies. Uh, okay, here is how you get to it. Now, I, I know you probably can't see that first line. That's, that's not the way it looks on my, my screen. But if you go to the, the, the NRCS e-directives, and I think they, they should have access to these, if I'm not mistaken, they'll get they access to all these. So, so this is the, what, what you do, you'll go to this e-directives website, or NRCS, you'll go in and you'll select handbooks, and if you can look over here, this is, that's what the directives website looks like, and in handbooks is right here, so you just select handbooks, and then you'll go down, select 210 engineering, the national engineering handbook, and then you'll select 637, which is the environmental engineering section, and then when it's posted, You'll find one that says select chapter four. So it'll have chapter four in there, and this is where the document will be. The document is 202 pages long, so it's, it's a, a rather large document. And we're, again, we're, we're pretty excited about this. But this is what the document, the, the cover page looks like on this, this particular document. Again, I, I think this is probably the most thorough document that you'll find in the world. And I know that's maybe that's making a big statement because you know you have a lot of different studies, individual studies that are out there. They'll cover a screw press, or they will cover this, or they may cover the theory. But here, this document brings it all together, and I think this is a really good document on that. We'll give a special thanks out to again to the CESU group uh, for allowing us to, to use their services to to get this document, and also. I just want to make a special thanks to Dr. John Chastain for the work he put on that. And I'm going to do something I was actually told I was not supposed to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. We have our first official copy of the document. This is our first official copy of, of the document. And I'm going to present this to Dr. John Chastain for all the work that he did today. Thank you, John. I think many of you get a chance to, to look at this. I, I think that you'll you'll be pleasantly pleased with, with what this document looks like. Here's my contact information if you have any questions or anything on this. And uh, this is kind of my, my logo. This is one of my favorite things. So, uh, do, <coughs> does anyone have any questions? Again, it's just more of an information type of thing. It doesn't have prices. It does not give a actual prices. What it does, it gives kind of a, a dollar sign type of thing. So if, if something is fairly expensive, it'll have three dollar signs. If it's an inexpensive technology, it'll have one dollar sign. So it gives a relative price in there. Yes? Uh, does it list both uh, the reduction in mass uh, separation and what, what, what it does, it gives the, it gives the, the background of how to, to calculate it. It doesn't do it because it, it varies depending on this, the, the technology. Uh, so it does not do that for every 
every technology, but it, tell, it explains how to do it so that you can actually do those calculations yourself. Yes? So take any Well, what, what it does is it allows you to, to, to build that into the, into the, the, the determination because of, of the variabilities. Um, again, that's where the equations or calculations and things are in there to allow you to do that. It, it, again, it does not give you the actual numbers. It'll say, here's the range, and that range is because of, of different variabilities that, that take place, and then you would build that into your calculation as to why it would be different from the southeast versus the would this influence our national standard for NCS? We haven't probably already discussed that. It, it has bits and pieces in the national standard, but once this document does come out, we will be adjusting the national standard because it's right now, if, if those of you who are familiar, our 632 waste separation facility standard, it has a it has just a table in there on different separation technologies. We're probably going to update that table based on this document. Because we're going to refer to the document instead of that table. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much.